So hi everyone, I'm Julia, I'm a junior here at Newark Academy. So a couple weeks ago, I'm lying in bed, probably procrastinating, scrolling through Instagram when I came across this image. It's a picture of a problem found in a physics, physics textbook. And the setup to the problem reads, you were kidnapped by political science majors who are upset because you told them political science is not a real science. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is pretty funny, but the more I think about it, the more I realize how accurately it describes the experience of a student. In the education system as it stands, STEM and the humanities are kept pretty separate. Just like in the problem, the political science majors don't study a real science, they're only classified under the humanities. And for that reason, it can also be very difficult to obtain a truly in-depth education in both areas. For example, I have a strong interest in both. And this year, I wanted to further my interest in science by taking two science classes, a second year of chemistry and a year of physics. But this came with a trade-off. I had to drop history. When I look back more on my life, I recognize the choice that I've constantly had to make between STEM and the humanities. Even when I was very little, I was labeled a STEM kid because of the early skill that I showed there. And as a result, my education tended to prioritize those subject areas. No matter how self-aware I may be of that now, I still feel deficiencies in certain skill sets that are typically learned in a more liberal arts setting. And that's negatively impacted me as both an academic and as a general citizen of the world. So in this TED Talk, I want to take a time out from all that to both examine and offer solutions to how we are sorted into either the STEM or the liberal arts camp, how it affects our education, and what it means for our future. So I want to begin first with a look at my personal experience. When I was little, as most kids are, I was curious about everything. I was a voracious reader. Nobody could ever get my attention when I was reading. My friends made a little sign for me that said, in the zone, and it meant that while I was reading, nobody was allowed to come and talk to me. I once walked straight into a column at an airport and gave myself a bloody nose because I had my head buried in a Percy Jackson book. I also became really interested in history through my reading. I went through a total ancient Egypt phase courtesy of these lovely books, the Magic Treehouse <laughs> series. Around this time, I also began interesting. Began, I also began my interest in creative writing. And now, granted, I was not a prodigious young writer by any means, but I really loved it, and I was always eager for more. But where I really excelled was in math. It wasn't long before I had memorized my times tables, and I could add and subtract fractions pretty easily. So at the encouragement of my parents and my math teacher, two of my peers and I would meet with my teacher in the mornings before school to explore a little further. We would learn about Rubik's cubes and how to do multiplication carrying numbers instead of using partial products. My parents even fueled my interest to such an extent that they gave me extra workbooks of math word problems to do at home. Now, I'm gonna stop right there, I know what you're all thinking. Oh my god, what a massive nerd. <laughs> but in my defense, this was also before there was a ton of homework to do after school. So the problem solving was just pure enjoyment for me. And then of course my love, and my love for science came alongside math naturally. They're both parts of the same STEM acronym. I was set up to be a STEM kid through and through. When I think more about those moments in my life now, I basically recognized that as my skill in STEM came through, I, I, I sort of, there was, a pri there was a priority distinction made there. So my writing, my education in writing, in English, in history, yeah, it obviously still existed, but it was just less important because my promise in STEM sort of meant that I would continue to study that as I got older. I was always better at math and science. I always found it easier to do a few math problems than to write a book report. And my history projects back then were pretty disorganized. So then fast forward to high school, I'm a little older, and I basically find myself afforded with this decision. Option A, continue on the STEM path that had been predetermined for me low those many years ago, take as many science classes as I possibly can, or option B, try to branch out a little more, but maybe not be able to obtain as deep of an education in both areas. Now obviously I'm not gonna pretend that my experience in this is universal, but when I look at the average curriculum, both in high school and in college across the country, I find similar trends. 
Take the city of Elizabeth, for example, not too far from here. It's a huge school district, so there are actually several different options for high schools for students to choose from. These include a preparatory school, much like Newark Academy, a career and technical school, an arts high school, and a science and technology high school. So it's the same sort of deal. You either go broad, but perhaps not that deep, or you really hone in on one area at a more specialized school, but this comes at the expense of another area. Further along the path in college, universities definitely do make conscious efforts to help students get into both. Juniors and seniors in the room, I'm sure you're all sick of college talk by this point, but bear with me as I talk about Columbia's core curriculum, which is defined as the set of common courses required of all undergraduates and considered the necessary general education for students, irrespective of their choice and major. And many other colleges, instead of a core curriculum, might have distribution requirements. So instead of taking prescribed classes, you simply have to take courses in certain areas. But then, further along the line in college, you have to decide your major, and the paths between STEM and humanities diverge. And it goes to such a point that biases against one or the other may even develop. At Stanford, for example, STEM and liberal arts majors are known as techies and fuzzies. It makes liberal arts majors seem soft, unable to handle the hard, cutthroat world of technology. This is Silicon Valley, Wednesday nights, 8, 7, Central. <laughs> Sounds like a reality show, right? It's a little bit ridiculous. And then there are tweets like this one. College is crazy because you can be in the library working on your 20 plus page biochem lab report while some girl sitting next to you cuts out gingerbread men for her education class and complains about not having enough time to do it. Again, this is a pretty extreme example, but the irony here is that while, yes, the subject matters, clearly, of STEM and the humanities might be a little different, the skills they require are actually so interdisciplinary. Take my first calculus class, for example. In that class, I truly appreciated how much I really needed to have an in-depth understanding of the concepts. No more could I just memorize how to get from a problem to a solution. I had to be able to solve problems on tests that I had never seen before. And so the second that I was required to actually come up with a unique sort of solution, I just fell flat on my face. Creativity and the ability to conceptualize these more abstract theories, much like, say, a literature major might have to do when analyzing themes in a text, was so critical to my education in that class. And it took me a little while to adjust to applying that almost humanity-centered skill set in a math class. And then on the flip side of things, STEM majors learn how to connect one piece to another one. They learn paths of logic when they compose proofs. And that's the same sort of skill that somebody who studies the humanities has to do when they analyze and do close readings of a text. It's also become increasingly clear how vital an in-depth education in both is for future success. Because subjects are so interdisciplinary, it becomes really hard to find an area of study where someone who, say, maybe lacked a liberal arts skill set can really excel. Say, for example, you're really good at pure math but you haven't taken English class seriously your entire life, and now the mere mention of the words two-page paper makes you spontaneously burst into tears. <laughs> well, economics might be a little tough for you to study there. Of course, this example is, doesn't occur that often, but you get my point. An article in the Washington Post entitled Why We Still Need to Study the Humanities in a STEM World describes how essential a humanities education is for uh, teaching leadership skills and how to communicate with others. Because at its core, humanity studies, well, humans. Where is this important? <clears throat> Teamwork in the laboratory and peer review are so central to the STEM world. Similarly, an article in Forbes magazine also testifies that, quote, a liberal arts education is most effective when encompassing STEM fields. Do y'all remember those impossible two column proofs you had to do in geometry? You actually learn really important organizational skills from that, which you might use when, say, compiling information that you're doing for research or learning how to structure an essay. Those skills are often obtained in classes like math and science. Now, I bet I can guess what you're all thinking now. Oh, well, Julia, this is all very fine and good information, but what should be done about this STEM humanities dichotomy? Where do we go from here? In short, a more integrated curriculum, one that combines elements of both STEM and humanities in certain classes, 
will be key to giving ever curious young students the ability to explore a wide array of interests, while also giving them the tools and skill set to succeed in a world as rapidly moving as this one. Enter STEAM, a new educational concept. Fun fact, it's employed in the middle school here, although sadly after I moved on to the high school. According to their website, the philosophy of STEAM revolves around science and technology interpreted through engineering and the arts, all based in mathematical elements. I just threw a lot of words at you. <laughs> so let me break that down real quick. In short, the STEAM model combines science and math classes with elements of the liberal arts so that you can apply the various skills you might pick up in these areas all in one classroom setting. It's pretty remarkable, isn't it? So spreading the STEAM model in classrooms at a young age, that would be so influential to a student's education. I know that I would have thrived off classes based around this model when I was in elementary and middle school. And then, of course, when you get older, a collaboration across disciplines is what's going to be key to giving students this, this meaningful and so hugely important education. Small liberal arts colleges, for example, might want to work with more STEM-oriented schools to design more integrated curriculums ones that students from both schools can really participate in. Also, it is possible to, yes, you can double major in both a STEM subject and a humanities subject, but I'll warn you, the requirements for those, major, for those majors don't really overlap. You'd have to take a ton of classes, and you probably wouldn't have a lot of room for extracurriculars. So if you do that, you are at serious risk of spending your college career looking like this. <laughs> and I know me, and I'm a pretty ambitious person too, but I wouldn't want to spend my college looking like that. But what about this option? What if the actual majors themselves were more interdisciplinary? Wow, what a novel idea, right? <laughs> um, so say you have a major that combines computer science with elements of marketing or psychology. Imagine how helpful that would be when you're designing new software. That way everyone understands the extent of what the technology can do and can also predict how humans, who are the actual users, can react to it. And this is where we, as individuals, as students, can really take control of our own education. Some high schools, like New York Academy, allow students to devise their own independent study courses. And more universities still let students create their own major that's suited to them. We can take charge of our education and design these more interdisciplinary curricula ourselves. The STEM humanities dichotomy defines education from as early on as elementary school. And it certainly defined my education. Yet, there's nothing wrong with pursuing one's interests. I get that. But a gap so profound between the two subject areas, that can only negatively affect the student's development as both an intellectual and as a general citizen of the world. Integrating the two areas, breaking down that invisible wall between them, that's what's going to be key to giving students the most meaningful education possible. Thank you for listening to my talk. And now, it's time to make a change. It's time we impart the message that when we are so young and our minds are so open, education should be widespread and most of all, joyful. Thank you.